Joining me to discuss this further is financial analyst Boston Omofai. Good to have you join us, Boston Thank Omofai. You, um, I mean, this is big news for Nigeria. Might not necessarily mm. be good news. Mm. Um, how is it impacting the trading in the market? I guess you just a uh, little bit. The market was down mm. about 2% um, uh, in today. But I, I just checked a few minutes ago. That's beginning to taper off a little bit. So we've seen that down to about 1.7%. Uh, we're about 15 minutes before the closing gong on the stock exchange. But again, if you uh, take the main index aside and you look at the banking index, that's where you find where the market was bleeding the most. Banks down about 6.6%. The insurance, which is their closest cousin in terms of financial services, about 5.57% about 10 minutes ago. So that tells you that investors are looking at the uh, financial services industry in Nigeria. Again, the banks gives you a mirror of the rest of, of what happens in the market. So if investors are going to panic, if they are concerned about Nigeria becoming a part of the uh, coronavirus uh, footprint, global footprint, then the banking and insurance will be the first place to know. And that is indicative of what we saw today already. We, we also see stock exchanges around the world um, reacting to the coronavirus spread. Now, if this persists, what could be the scenario? Yeah, the scenario is already out. We've lost about $6 trillion since the week started. Uh, globally, I, I mean, uh, there are fears all around. And again, for Nigeria, in terms of, uh, of the economy, uh, uh, news just about an hour ago was that uh, 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 the refineries in China have, uh, uh, have reduced their intake of uh, crude by 400,000 barrels. Uh, and that is significant. Everybody is waiting for OPEC plus Russia to come up with a statement uh, where we are. But if the refineries in China are reducing their intake of crude for refining, that tells you there's a serious problem with demand. Uh, the, uh, the global aviation body, IATA, just says this could cost the industry about $60 billion. That means aviation fuel is also getting impacted. Already deliveries for March for crude exports already being priced at a premium. Uh, oil vessels are sitting uh, are across the oceans with, with, with crude oil that no one wants to buy. So there's a big problem here. If you look at crude Brent now around $50 a barrel, that's a very big, bigger problem for Nigeria moving forward if you look at our fiscal outlook for 2020. And this is not good news because we know that the stability of the global economy hangs on the trade of oil. Mm -hmm. So what can be done to ensure that um, we minimize further shocks? I, I think everyone will have to come together. This, someone says, this is a time for the world to unite. Mm -hmm. But again, I think some of what has been, the soundbites we've heard from Nigerian authorities are convincing enough. Uh, we need to prevent this from happening. You need to wipe your desk. You don't let it happen before you deal with it. And that's the, the, the good news about it. So we can all take uh, 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 measures. But again, for, for us in Nigeria, I think what we need to watch is also our supply chains. We are heavily, uh, uh, we're we heavily import dependent country. And some of the articles, both food, non-food, that comes in comes from China. We have a very big relationship with that. Uh, already there's a very, uh, demand has dropped for, for foreign currency, for <laughs> Uh, folks who do trading with uh, China, everybody's trying to play safe. So, so if you look at the currencies market right now, rates are down a little bit because demand is very low in terms of both the Chinese yuan and the dollars for those who want to do imports from China. That will cut our imports a little bit. But again, there's a downside to that because we may need some of these raw materials. So the global supply chain is the first line of where those who are in charge of the health Port authorities need to watch both the seaports and the airports in terms of the goods that are coming in and those who are handling these goods and those who are working in our extractive industry specifically. Oil and gas, hydrocarbon industry, those who travel overseas where we have expatriates and those who are non-expatriates and all of that. If we keep a tight watch on this, I think we can try to minimize the, the impact of, of, of this moving forward. Uh, I think we just need to wait and see. But what about speculation and how in oh. it impacts trading? <laughs> well, folks will speculate. Mm -hmm. I think the, um, I'm not too sure if we run this bloodletting we've seen this week globally to next week. I think the initial fear is out there, but again, the real outbreak is just happening. China was the, uh, was the, was the birthplace, but again, it's now spreading globally. So the f global fear is just emerging, as it were. And I think after this week and the weekend, everyone will sit back and say, okay, if we continue to let the market bleed this way, we're gonna end up doing ourselves a lot of injuries. So we need to close ranks a little bit 
and let the fear factor begin to recede and be more rational in the way we price financial assets, whether they're stocks, gold, bonds, whatever, crude oil, whatever. If we don't do that, mm -hmm. we're going to end up in, uh, harming the global marketplace and the global economy in a very serious way. Already, Goldman Sachs is, is forecasting that the U.S. might go into a recession because mm -hmm. of this. That's not good news. If mm -hmm. U.S. sneezes, then the rest of the world will have a big problem. Then you have an election year uh, this year in the U.S. That's a very serious concern for everyone. Absolutely. Um, financial analyst Bosin Omofai, Thank thanks for breaking My this pleasure. down for us.